I bring you greetings from Assemblies of God, Medina Central. And I salute the general superintendent of Assemblies of God, Ghana, Reverend Professor Paul Fimpo Manson, for his able leadership and all the executive presbytery for their good work. In the face of these difficult times, many believers are panicking and some are even confused as to what they want to do but the word of god assures us that we should not give up but we should continue to keep trusting god for our protection shall we go to psalm 91 and see the assurance of God why we should keep our trust in him. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. you will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday a thousand may fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you you only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation shall we pray but father we are grateful thank you for today thank you for your grace and your mercy thank you for life thank you for protection thank you for healing thank you for protection we commit our lives onto your hands and we ask that you will speak to us in jesus name amen our sinful world is full of danger diseases injuries and disaster a risk of everyday life. We never know when we might contract a serious illness or diseases or when we will be involved in accident or come into contact with any pestilence or any disease. The danger of life and its ongoing threats can leave us feeling insecure and in spite of all this, sometimes we try our best to protect ourselves as God's children. But in trying to do so, our efforts sometimes do not go as expected. For generations, many children of God have resorted to God for their security and their protection and some in trying to look for protection have gone astray and had made their problems more problematic psalm 91 appears to promise god's children that if we live close to him and we come close to him clench to him and keep trusting him God would exempt us from harm 
from disaster and from diseases. Men of God like Moses, David, and Paul, and a host of other servants of God, in the face of danger, had put their trust in God, and God had protected them. I want us to go through Psalm 91 and see three reasons why every Christian should put their trust in God. And if you read Psalm 91, you will see three reasons. And the first reason is that we should keep trusting in him because we have trusted our faith in him, if you like, or we have entrusted our faith in him. The second reason is that we depend on the peace of God. And then the third reason is that we hold fast to God in love. This morning, I want us to look at the first point, trusting God for our protection because we have entrusted our faith in him. And we see that from verses 1 to 4. And trusting our faith in God. Verses 1 to 4. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Entrusting your faith in God. Entrusting your faith in God, firstly, um, you believe in the person of God. Talking about the personality of God. Those who have entrusted their faith in God believe in the person of God. They know who God is. They know the nature of God, the God that they serve. The Bible says that he that comes to him, that's what he says, that he that comes to me must believe that he exists and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Who is the kind of God that you put your faith in him? And the, 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 the identity of God is seen from the names that is mentioned in the verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2 says that whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, number 2, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty, and number 3, I will say of the Lord, and number 4, my fortress and my God. So, God is mentioned four times in these verses one and two. We have the Most High, we have the Almighty, we have the Lord, and then we have my God. When we say the Most High, what do we mean? We're talking about the personality of God. Dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. The Most High is talking about the El Elyon God, the God who is ascended high. He is the God who cannot be overthrown. He is the supreme being. He is the owner of the universe. He is the most high. He cannot be overthrown. He cannot be dethroned. He cannot be overcome. He cannot be overturned. He cannot be obtained. This is the God that you say you have put your faith in. He's not only the most high, he is also the almighty, the El Shaddai God. The God who has ultimate power over all the universe. That is the God that you say you have faith in. Then the third name is seen in the verse 2. It says, I will say of the Lord. This Lord is the covenant-keeping God. He is the Yahweh God. And the, that, this Lord is the, the one who revealed himself to Moses. And Moses says that, who are you? And he says that, I am who I am. He's saying that, I 
am who I am. I want to do and I can do whatever I want to do. He, the Yahweh God, would give us our deliverance, he will give us our forgiveness, and he will give us guidance. As we relate to him, our relationship with him has come as out with a, a lot of names that we've given him. And so, if we look at the Jehovah God, we have several names. We have Jehovah Jireh, talking about the Lord, our provider. We have Jehovah Rapha, talking about God, or the Lord who heals. We have Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner. Jehovah Makadish, the Lord who sanctifies. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. Jehovah Elohim, the Lord, our God. Jehovah Chikenu, the Lord, our righteousness. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord, our shepherd. Jehovah Shaman, the Lord is there. Jehovah Shabbat, we talk about the Lord of hosts. We have a lot of names. He is the God that we say we have put our faith in. And the third name is talking about God. He says, my God, my God. And this is the God Elohim, the creator, the mighty, and the strong one. He's the creator of the universe. This is the God that we say we will save him. Putting our trust in him. So firstly, we believe in his personality. And secondly, we also believe in his promises. And his promises is seen in the verse 2. It says, surely he will save you from the foul snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Here, his promises is seen. See, I will save you from the foul snare. The foul snare is talking about any trap that is set. The foul snare, a trap is a device which is put in place somewhere. Sometimes it's hidden so that you will be caught without knowing it that is the trap we are not only protected from the trap of the enemy we will also protect us against fatal diseases from deadly pestilence diseases i i, I don't know but whatever disease that you are going through god says he will protect us the disease today we are running away, crying, talking about coronavirus. But it, it may be, it may be HIV, it may be kidney disease, it may be cancer, it may be whatever. Pressure, heart blood pressure and whatever. God says that he will protect his children. And another promise is seen in verse 4. He will bless us with the fruit of faith. He will cover you with his feathers. That will be a refuge in God's winds. In God's winds. So we have a whole lot of promises here. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. So God would protect us. A rampart is a tall, thick stone or a wall. That is built around a castle or a town. So even around us is a wall of God that would protect his children. What are we talking about today? We're talking about God's children putting their faith in him. If you are looking for security, you are looking for protection, this is the time you will have to consider God and keep trusting him for your protection. Because we have expressed our faith in him. And because we have expressed our faith in him, we know who he is. And we talk about a lot of names here. I will want us to look at just four of these. Jehovah Jireh, talking about God, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, God, our healer. Jehovah Shalom, God, our peace. 
Jehovah Rohi God, our shepherd. He will heal us no matter what we are going through. He will provide. Right now, we are afraid of probably there will be scarcity of even water, scarcity of food. So people are buying food, people are buying rice, trying to hold them. We are afraid. God says that he will be our provider. He will be our healer. He is our peace. And he will protect us. His promises protect us against the snares of the father and against deadly pestilence. Friends, believers, don't let us run away from God. Don't go out there. Don't seek any protection apart from God. He is all powerful. He is all sufficient. He is the faithful one. He is the only one that we have to run to. He is our fortress. Let's keep trusting him. And when we trust him, he will save us. There is this scripture in Romans 8, 11. It says that, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit who lives in us. Children of God, we have God's spirit in us. Let's keep trusting. Let's keep holding on. And I believe that if you do this, his protection will be our portion. I may want to end here. When we have opportunity next time, we will continue with a point number two and point three. But remember, anytime you read Psalm 91, always remember that God wants us to put our trust in him because those of us who have put our trust in him, we have faith in him, we depend on his peace and we also hold fast to him in love. Whilst we are in our homes, I want you to look at Psalm 57, 1 and 2 for our prayer point. Psalm 57, 1 and 2. He says that, I have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. Every day when you wake up in the morning, keep trusting. Continue to put your trust in him and tell him that God, I have faith in you because I believe in your person and I believe in your promises. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for your word. We pray that we will continue to remind ourselves with your word. Thank you and we bless you for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen.